Excuse me. Oh, toy on the floor again. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. On the floor again. I don't like that, do I? No, no, I don't. No. <laughs> that on the floor again you're gonna put that on the floor again hmm? you're gonna put it on the floor again hmm? on the floor again on the floor again I just can't wait to get on the floor again coffee in about at least a month or more probably just having green tea with uh, ginger and turmeric and cloves and all sorts of good healthy stuff in it. yeah I'm feeling better now too a little bit <clears throat> anyway done my tea now now I'm done my tea so why don't we head on over to Kent's kitchen and uh, see what we can cook up or something. All right, let's go do that. Well, hello, welcome to Kent's kitchen and cooking with Kent. <laughs> let's see what we can cook up today, okay? All right, let's get on this right away. Right away. So here's something that I've been uh, cooking up for breakfast uh, um, a lot more lately, um, you know, just uh, trying to stay healthy and eat really good food and everything. So what I've got here is I've got this, uh, I don't know where the cereal, uh, or the cereal box deteriorated a while back and uh, it fell apart. So I just have this bag left, but this is actually um, Red River cereal, Red River cereal. And a lot of you will uh, probably recognize the name. Red River cereal, and uh, it's out of Canada. And uh, basically, what it is, it's uh, stone ground wheat and rye with flax added in there. And uh, it's you know you boil, uh, cook it up uh, like a porridge, any porridge. It's good and healthy and stuff like that, and gives you a lot of the nutrients from the grains and stuff. Especially the flax has a, flax has a serious amount of nutrients in it. It also has um, a fiber in there. You you only get from either old vegetables or flax or um, I can't remember what else it was but it's a uh, lignin the lignin uh, fiber uh, that's one of your main uh, one of your very main um, necessary or dietary uh, fibers there's five of them and lignin is number five but anyway so that's that there uh, wheat rye and flax and uh, then on top of that what I do is I've got this uh, let's get this out of the way I've got my buckwheat I've mentioned this before buckwheat I call it buckseed because it's not a wheat it's not a grain it's nothing not even related it's so far away but these are seeds just little seeds it's a weed and it grows these seeds and buckwheat is the healthiest thing on the planet in a, in a natural food group um, it's got everything you need in it including your proteins and even vitamin c it's got everything you can live a long healthy life on nothing but buckwheat or buck seed i like to call it buck seed because it's not a wheat it's a bad bad misnomer so what i do is i get out my magic nutribullet here the blender 
and grinder kind of thing. It's a very powerful one. And anyway, what I do is I, I take about a quarter of cup of the Red River cereal. I put it in there and I grind it down into a fine, 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 fine powder, as fine as I can get it. And then, after that, I take the buckwheat and I take about a cup of that. So it's like a quarter cup of the, uh, the grain and a full cup of the buckwheat. So it's got, you know, a four to one balance kind of thing. And then I throw that in and grind that all up with the ground up Red River cereal. So it's uh, buckwheat and Red River cereal all ground up into a really, really super fine flour. They're as fine as you can get it, right? And then the next thing we do is that I take just a certain amount of this uh, buckwheat and Red River cereal mix here. Look at how fine powder that is. Just the right amount. Just level that off just the right amount. And I should mention that uh, if you don't know Red River cereal, just uh, Google it. It's been around longer than I've been alive. So it's a really good healthy cereal. But uh, anyway, that's about right there. One scoop of that. Then I get some uh, flour. And I take just a bit of that flour there. Now the flour is just to bind all the buckwheat and the grains all together because on their own they don't bind very good to make like a, a pancake or something like that. So the flour helps bind them together and uh, and just uh, hold together in a, in a, you know, in a pancake form and that. That's done that one there. And then I take a tiny bit of baking powder. Everything has to have baking powder and baking powder will... Um, uh, it will uh, not only help bind it together, but what it helps do is it helps the, the pancake or whatever you're making kind of rise, sort of thing. So we put that in, so we put in some flour, put in some baking powder, and uh, on top of that, I'm going to uh, take some of the, this is for my benefit only, take some of the slippery elm bark and uh, throw a bit of that in, because that's good for rebuilding the mucous membrane of your intestinal walls so for me that's good because i have crohn's and if you have crohn's it might be a good idea to try this out so that's in there as well and then uh, i'm going to throw in just a little bit of salt because you've got to put a tiny bit of salt in everything just to make the flavors pop and everything so there's that and then i just blend it all up like this blend it all up make sure it's well mixed kind of thing you can just shake it up like that and that and then just blend it really well and if there's little clumps of flour tiny tiny lumps of flour or something just crush them make sure everything's crushed down and powdered as well as you can and there you go that's really well mixed there very well mixed there so on some occasions i can put stuff in like uh, five spice here if I want to throw a little dab of that in, but I'm not going to today. I just I just want a basic plain thing. But you can add brown sugar a little bit, or any kind of flavoring you want in there. You know, just experiment and see what, how you feel. So I've got that. That's the uh, ground up uh, Red River cereal uh, with the grains. It's got the buckwheat, got some flour and some um, baking powder, and a tiny hint of salt. So then what I do here is I'm taking one egg. Drop that in there, and then I'm just going to mix that really carefully so it blends all in really well together. So it takes a little while, you just blend it slowly, slowly, slowly. Go round and round and round until it's all blended into a mass. And you can actually whip the egg a bit as you're doing it too, it helps. And then it whips and it all together and blends it really nicely. And like I said, it's going to take a few minutes to do that, so make sure it's good, well blended, and depending on how you feel about your pancakes and stuff, um, you know, blend it really well and get all the lumps out. Um, if you like lumpy stuff, I know a lot of people that do, so they can have, just leave it lumpy. <laughs> there we go. So now this is really well blended together, really blended, and it's quite thick, very thick. I'm going to leave it like that, but if you want, if you want a thinner pancake, like a lot of people I like them really thin, just add water and make it to the right um, thickness that you want, you know, like uh, 
thin it right out to nothing or just leave it thick like this or halfway in between it's up to you totally up to you but I'm doing it this way today for a certain purpose just to show you what it's like okay let's get on with cooking this so now here we have the oil extra virgin olive oil all heated up in the pan here really hot and ready to go so now we're just gonna pour out the pancake and I'm gonna need a spoon to get this out because it's so thick I just I don't want to leave much behind and you don't want to take too much time getting it out there but there we go look at how thick that is that is crazy it's like really thick porridge there that's about as good as it gets I'll rinse that out later rinse that out later and then uh, we can roll it around a bit and try and get the the pancake batter to kind of roll off and spread out more if you want that's out there. It looks kind of small, but that is a, quite a bit of food in there. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you ate nothing but these all your life, you'd live a long, healthy life. It's got everything in it you need. All the protein, nutrients, vitamin C, everything. Absolutely everything. So we're just going to let that cook and brown up like a typical pancake, get the bubbles coming up and then drying out, and then we'll flip it over and go from there. So there we go, all the bubbles have come up and popped, and it's almost fully dry on the top there, so I think it's ready to flip over. It should look gorgeous on the other side. So let's move the oil around a bit more. There we go, get some oil in there, and then flip that. Oh, look at that, nice and toasty brown, eh? Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? So we're gonna cook that a little bit more till it's fully done, and then we'll plate that sucker and get ready to eat it. Right on. Okay, that should be ready now. So, I think it's brown. Ooh, nicely browned on the bottom. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's ready. Let's plate that. Turn this off. There we go. Let that sit for a sec. Oh! <laughs> wow. Anyway, that doesn't look like a huge amount there, does it? It's a pretty small pancake, but it's got a whole egg in there. It's got the buckwheat and the and the grains in there. I mean, it's a filling filling meal, and especially for me, I only eat two small meals a day because of my uh, Crohn's condition. So for me, it's it's a it's a pretty much a full meal. But on top of that, I'm gonna have a mango as well. So mango and this pancake, and and that's pretty much all I need. Gets me through the day. <clears throat> it doesn't overburden my body and gives me all the nutrients I'll ever need. So. What we're going to do first is we're going to slap some butter on there. Like all pancakes have to have butter, right? They all have to have butter. So slap some butter on there if we can. <laughs> there you go. There we go. And then uh, we're going to sit down and eat this in a minute. But before we do that, we're going to do something extra. Now look, all that butter's all melted on there. Really nice. And... Uh, we're just going to take some blackberry jam. Blackberry jam and throw that on top. Oh my gosh. And now this is homemade blackberry jam. It's made the way it should be made. It's not that store-bought garbage. So it actually has some nutrients and vitamin in it. Even though it's got you know a certain amount of sugar in there. But uh, like I say, it's homemade. So it's way better um, than store-bought. It's not like junk stuff. It actually can be somewhat good for you. And a little bit of sugar, <laughs> I think it's good for me because it gives me extra energy I need because I'm so low in energy. But anyway, there we go. Let's go eat this, all right? Ciao. There we go. Here we go. So this is going to be good. I know it. Now, it's not going to be as delectable as, uh, you know, a uh, white flour pancake, you know, the stuff that has no nutrition in it for you and just tastes good. But it is going to taste good. Um, but it's going to be super healthy for you, just super healthy. So, there we go. There we go. Buckwheat pancake with uh, Red River cereal. <laughs> mm. Mm. Definitely tastes good though, especially with the blackberry uh, jam. Mm. But when you bite into it, you can tell it's not really fluffy and not and kind of flat like your typical pancake. It's uh, 
it's you can definitely tell there's stuff in there and uh, you can tell it's healthy too it's really good buckwheat pancakes is what they used to make make in the 1800s and early 1900s as well they make the pancakes out of buckwheat very health, healthy very healthy mm. very good mm -hmm. mm. So that one little pancake packs a lot of nutrition and everything. It's very filling, especially for me. And um, it'll keep me going all day long. Worst case scenario, I'll just get have a supper earlier if I get hungry. <laughs> just start supper an hour earlier or something. Mm. Mm. But it's definitely good. Definitely healthy for you. If you ate nothing but these all your life, you live a long, healthy life because it has everything. And then, you know, if I'm still a little hungry, I just have a mango <laughs> or something, you know, a banana, mango, whatever. I just fill that gap. But these things here and maybe a piece of fruit or something, it's all you need to carry you through the whole day, whole day. Mm. Mm. Very good, very good. Mm. So that's basically one of my um, dietary things I do for my health and my condition. And uh, it's very good. And I don't have to overeat. Mm -hmm. It is actually very good. <laughs> mm. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And... Uh, you know, go out and experiment. Try it yourself. Get some buckwheat and grind it up into the finest flour you can do and make stuff out of it. But like I said, you'll find a hard hard binding of buckwheat together. So if you add a little bit of flour or other things, egg, anything to help bind it and pull it together, the baking powder. Um, otherwise, it'll just sort of run off and get. you'll get this weird looking pancake with all these things sticking out with that instead of nice really nice round one but anyway just experiment and try it but buckwheat and that stuff will be the healthiest things you'll ever eat and uh then the rest is just uh kind of moot point <laughs> anyway finish this up i'm gonna hit my mango and then we're gonna get out of here and do stuff okay ciao for now So that yard sale I was trying uh, was kind of a bust. Uh, nobody stopped. Well, a couple people stopped, but it was nothing serious. Nobody was actually looking. But it's uh, the problem with the... Uh, it's a long weekend right now. And uh, with everyone coming down the highway, and there's a lot of tourist traffic, and then they have to... Uh, they have to wait in line to get around Cameron Lake. And then they, they come out here, and they just want to go and do their stuff. And then turn around and come back and go back home again and get through the line up and that and i don't know for some reason nobody wants to stop and take time out and that but uh i'm thinking uh during the week uh um when they're in their regular routine and that and they'll be more likely to do it but as you can see there's no lineups behind me so they've got a regular scheduled um, back and forth on the weekends um so there's not the huge lineups uh that there was before so that's the problem anyway it doesn't really matter i mean i'll try and do it on tuesday or something like that maybe or another day of the week we'll see and if that doesn't work it doesn't really matter it's not about making money it's just about mostly unloading my unneeded stuff and if that's the case then i'll just uh, take it all down to saint stephen's church there and then just give it to them and they'll find people that really need the stuff so you know one way or another, it's going to happen. I'll get rid of my stuff, and that'll be that. But anyway, I'm right now, I'm standing out uh, by the uh, side of the highway here, and I'll just have to show you what we're doing, what's going on. So this here now is sheep sorrel here. Uh, my knees are hurting. Ouch. Uh, so this is sheep sorrel here, this stuff here. 
And the way, one of the ways you can tell is these leaves here, they're narrow like that, long and narrow like that, and they have the two pointed ends at the base of the leaf there. Let's find a different one. Let's find a different one there. This one here, they have two points on their leaf there, eh? At the base. And that's one of the ways you can tell, but all the indicators are here that this is sheep sorrel. And let me grab a couple of leaves here. Or a leaf, I should say. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. There we go, the leaf there. Wow. It's a bit tart, but it's got a really strong lemony flavor, like the book said. Wow. Mm. And very juicy. Mm, very juicy. Mm, very nice. Very nice. Well, let's try that again. There we go. Nice long leaf with two pointed ends at the base of the leaf. Looks like arms <laughs> sticking out kind of thing. Yeah, so anyway. Wow, yeah. Very juicy, very lemon-like. It's only a little bit bitter, but I think it's less bitter than endive. Endive's pretty, uh, Belgian endive is pretty bitter. But that's sheep sorrel there, this stuff here. And these leaves apparently, they stay quite tender until the plant starts flowering like this. And then they'll start to you know, get a little older and tougher and start drying out a bit, but let's uh, check over here. Ouch! Right here, okay. Right here, there's a whole patch of newer stuff here. One of them's gone into flower there, one of them's starting into flower, but the rest of these, all of these, they're all fresh and green. Yeah, and uh, there we go. So, that so far is sheep sorrel. And because I can't remember everything all the time, uh, all the little details and that, let's check what the book says, okay? This is what the book says. The book says, these tart leaves remain fairly tender until the plant flowers, like I just said. And they've been nibbled on as a thirst quenching trail snack, and that's true. Very quenching, a lot of juice in them. And they add zest to soups, salads, and casseroles. It can also be boiled and served as a hot vegetable. And sheep's sorrel steeped in hot water and sweetened with honey can be made into a refreshing tea. And plants, oh, and plants have also been simmered, strained, and chilled to make a lemon, lemonade-like drink. Ah, huh, interesting. And here's a really cool, uh, interesting fact. The cucumber pickles made with brine and large amounts of sheep sorrel were considered a delicacy in the early 1900s. Wow, crazy, eh? Crazy, huh? But basically every part of the plant, oh, my knees are hurting. I gotta sit down. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, every part of the plant is edible. You can take the roots and uh, grind them up into flour, dry them, grind them into flour for making pancakes or anything. And, uh, or you can uh, dry them, roast them, and turn them into a coffee-like, sub, uh, coffee substitute-like thing, just like they do with uh, dandelion roots and stuff like that. Uh, but you could eat every single part of the plant. And uh, yeah, if you just want to eat it as a trail snack and get a thirst quenching going on there, if you're feeling dehydrated, yeah. Really juicy and actually a really nice flavor. A little bit tart, but the flavor is really good. It tastes so lemony. Wow, this is good. But that's another uh, wild foraging for, for thing for you, is uh, sheep sorrel. And uh, this stuff is everywhere. I'm sitting in this little, uh, little patch of grass here. Just all around here, all around me here. <laughs> And uh, this stuff is just everywhere, everywhere. There's tons of it. So I could actually, right in this little spot here, I could collect enough to actually make pickles, uh, cucumber pickles, and uh, stuff lots of it in there and make a really good delicacy uh, pickle. 
but uh, hmm, I can make a tea out of this. I'm getting, thinking I'm going to try making a tea out of it. I'll, uh, highway traffic noise. I'll take a bunch of fresh ones and I'll steep them in hot water. More traffic coming now. <laughs> Anyway, I just thought you'd find that an interesting part of uh, my wild foraging stuff. And uh, I hope you get out and try it sometime. But, you know, make sure whatever you're doing, identify it very, very well. Identify it over and over again. I've looked at this stuff many, many times before. I've decided that I'm on the right track here. And uh, that's exactly what it is. And it looks exactly like the picture in the book. It looks identical. I can't show you because there we go. It looks identical to the picture in the book there. So... Um, and the flavor and taste of what the book says is the same so I know I'm on the right track but yeah anytime you're out wild foraging anything especially mushrooms and that just make sure you know exactly what you're looking for and you make no mistakes whatsoever oh that's good stuff I like that I'm gonna enjoy using that stuff here and there so maybe I should get on with that and try some experiments <laughs> Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao for now.